When we think about what you should put in your art portfolio, we think of still lifes, observational drawings, portraits, landscapes, cityscapes, and self-portraits. To include examples of each of those types of work in your art portfolio is important. Another type of work you can add to your portfolio is language art or text-based art, which is art that incorporates language in some way, such as spoken word, poetry, written statements or alphabetical or numerical symbols. The basis of this idea is that you use language as an artistic element, an element and principle that communicates ideas and meaning to the viewer in a composition. Ashkin Art Portfolio Prep classes are individualized, so students work independently on their own projects with an Ashkan instructor. Some Ashkan art students become interested in making text-based work for their art portfolio. So we have them look at artists like Joseph Kossuth, Sol LeWitt, Louise Bourgeois, who were some of the first to give words a central role in their work, and also contemporary artists such as Tracy Eamon, Wayne White, Jenny Holzer, Ed Rusha, and Harlan Miller. People tend to have very different or slightly different visual associations with a word or a series of words, even when we share a common language. Ashkan art students come from so many different countries and have identities tied to different places often, adding to the range of linguistic and numerical symbols and meanings for that student creating the work and to the viewer. Making text-based art for your art portfolio is one way to make your work stand out to college admissions counselors. Try experimenting with the visual capabilities of texts and numbers in your notebook or your sketchbook. Working with words to devise configurations, semiotic imagery, and poetry or statements. Check out this video of an Ashkin art student project titled Voice. It's a sculpture made up of the faces of some of their favorite queer activists who have helped them understand themselves and others better. When a hand hovers above one of the faces, it triggers an audio clip from that activist to play. They speak about their experiences growing up queer and what they learned about their place in the world and society at large. I feel like the way I understand my gender is that I am both a man and a woman and neither a man or a woman. <laughs> I'm outside of these entire categories. I think they see me and they see me as a failure. Can you talk about um, assumptions that people have I, where I grew up, no one was deaf or kind of hearing, and I felt very alone in that way. When I was four years old, I started losing my hearing. When growing up, I knew I was feeling deaf, feeling profoundly deaf. A lot of people ask. Hey guys, it's Jamie, and today I am going to be talking about how I realized slash knew that I'm transgender, linked back to when I was a child, and significantly cuter than I am now. Basically, I was always referred to as a tomboy. I had my hair short, I did a lot of stereotypically like boy things and wore clothes from the You barely see asexual people as it is, let alone a black asexual person. I'm a model and asexuality activist and I am a aromantic asexual. There was never really a time where I didn't think that I was asexual because I noticed when I was about like eight and I was in but because of how the medical community treats intersex children, uh, I was assigned female because they, whoever was viewing my gender roles at the time, didn't think that I could be raised uh, as male. I was assigned female and I was brought home. Slash knew that I'm transgender, linked back to when I was a child and significantly cuter than I am now. Basically, I was always referred to as a tomboy. I had my hair short. I did a lot of stereotypical. Ashcan Art offers art portfolio preparation classes year round. Contact us at infomanhattan at ashcanart.com and see the classes we offer at www.ashcanart.com. You can see us on Instagram at ashcanart and please subscribe below for more art portfolio tips.